today's project diary is a step by step guide on what to add to make the best homemade compost. So I've managed to collect this over the past few months. This is all of our brown and I've cut the grass a few weeks ago I managed to keep all the grass cutting. All we need now is a few uh, garden scraps, food scraps, potato peelings. Don't use any dairy, don't use any milk or any fish. It's just going to stink up the place and attract loads of flies. Try and keep it natural. Now to put these in the bin. Now some people think that making homemade compost is easy. You just throw everything in one big pile and let it all rot down. Now while this method could get you some results in a couple of years, you may end up with a big smelly mess. Now if you follow these simple rules, it will help you avoid any bad odours and it will help you get nutritious compost in a fraction of the time. Now the secret behind good compost is helping the microorganisms do their job properly with four key ingredients. You'll need green materials which is your nitrogen, brown materials which is your carbon, air and moisture from water. Here's a list of easy green materials that you can add to your compost heap. Fruits and vegetable scraps, be it peels, rinds, cores or pulp. Garden waste such as grass clippings, young green leaves, weeds and dead flowers. Eggshells are not only rich in nitrogen, they also contain loads of calcium. Any bakery waste such as breads, donuts, cookies, pizza crusts, noodles or crackers. Just make sure they don't have any leftover cheese or chocolate in them. You can also add coffee grounds, the filters, tea bags and any old spices. Pond waste such as algae and seaweed are also a really good source of nitrogen. Pasta, rice, barley, cereals or oats, cooked or uncooked are also great. I know it sounds weird but also human hair and pet fur. Any manure from herbivore pets such as horses, rabbits, hamsters or guinea pigs. Here's a list of carbon based brown materials. Remember to stockpile autumn leaves in the fall. These are tremendous free source of brown materials that you could use all year round. Shredded newspapers are great. I just wouldn't use magazine clippings in case the ink is toxic. Straw is good. You can even use leftover pet bedding. Corn cobs or husks are great. They just may take a lot longer to break down. Ripped up cotton rags are great. Just make sure it's 100% cotton before adding them to your pile. Paper towels, napkins or toilet rolls are also fine. Just break them down into smaller pieces. Wool and dryer lint are also good. Peanut shells, sawdust, wood chips and ash are also great. I just wouldn't use leftover barbecue ash just in case it's got leftover oils or meat. Here's the most important list. This is what not to do with your compost heap. Adding any of these ingredients may attract unwanted pests such as rats and flies. Don't add any dairy products such as milk, butter, cheese, yogurt or sour cream. Any cooked or uncooked meats including fish and poultry that also includes bones, fats, gristles and skin. Don't add any grease, fats or oils to your mix. The last thing you want to do is add any seeding perennial weeds. Once you start using the compost, these are spread all over your garden. Also don't add any diseased plants. Any large chunks of wood or branches will take ages to break down. Don't add any pet feces such as dogs or cats. These hold harmful bacteria, germs and viruses. If you're thinking about building a worm bin, try not to add anything too highly acidic. Adding them to your compost pile should be fine, but it may deter any worms moving in after the cooking process. Now you know what to add to your compost bin, the next thing is adding all those materials into layers. The first layer should be any large brown material such as wood chips, then a green layer of leaves, followed by a brown layer of shredded cardboard then a green layer of grass clippings, followed by another brown layer of soil or dirt, then add a green layer of kitchen scraps. Your final layer should be a brown layer of leaves. So as you saw in the diagram earlier, you need a good balance of greens and browns. So get yourself a good bucket. My ratio is going to be, I'm going to use two brown to one bag of green. So just add as you go. So I've managed to pack it all in. It's a really tiring job this compost lark. If you can, as you can see here, the bottom of the bag's already started to break down really nice. So in a few months, this should be some really lovely compost. So as I've got a bucket of rainwater about, it's good to just dampen the top, keep some moisture in there, don't get it too wet. 
and uh, in a minute we're just going to cover it up with a bag from earlier just to keep the moisture in. So who needs a gym when you've got a compost bin? We're just going to top this off with the last layer of brown leaf. Now you'll know if your compost is good because you'll get that really nice sweet smell rather than a horrible rotting smell. So all we need to do is just put the plastic back on top. Now we're good to leave that for another couple of weeks before turning it again. Don't forget to aerate your compost heap every two to four weeks using a garden fork and check for any moisture problems. I hope you've enjoyed this project diary. Please subscribe to see my future videos. Here's some of the projects I'm working on at the moment. Best of luck if you try to make your own compost at home. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.